Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. Today we find ourselves at the Capitol building in the great state of Missouri. Let's take a peek inside. And here inside the Capitol building, we find one of the most famous people from Missouri, Samuel Longhorn Clemens, or better known as Mark Twain. He was actually born here in the state. Let's see what we can find out about him. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's further in the life of Mr. Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, we are here in beautiful Hannibal, Missouri with our good friends Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Let's go check this town out. Hannibal has the distinct honor of being the birthplace of Mark Twain. This is also where he grew up and is the inspiration for the town in Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. It's plain to see Mark Twain's influence on the town, even in the names of the businesses. They've gone so far that most people affectionately refer to Hannibal as Twain Town. We now have moved on to the Mark Twain Museum, an incredible building that is dedicated to honoring an incredible man. As one of the greatest American authors to have ever lived, there are very few out there who haven't heard the tales of Tom Sawyer and his best friend, Huckleberry Finn. However, Mark Twain wrote quite a few amazing stories in his day, and this museum made sure to highlight as many of them as they could. We are now inside the Mark Twain Museum. We're going to start out by checking out this here, which is his actual writing desk that was in his home. Though it is just a simple writing desk, it almost gave me goosebumps thinking of what stories may have possibly been written right here. Words that echoed through time and still entertained and influenced people long after the author was gone. Behind the desk, they filled the shelves with little knickknacks and mementos, things referring to either the museum itself or Mark Twain's famous stories, as well as a couple pictures of the man himself. Of course, Mark Twain was well known for his satire, and a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court was one of his strongest examples of this, a great and very entertaining time travel tale that ended up challenging quite a few viewpoints. They managed to have some of the actual original art pieces that were done for the illustrations of this book, and it was great seeing these hand-drawn descriptions of such an amazing tale. I've always been a fan of time travel tales, so it really amused me that they were telling stories of this hundreds of years ago even, and that people loved them back then just as much as today. In the story, the Yankee who is brought back to the days of Camelot ends up completely revolutionizing the way that they live their lives and the way things work. He says that they should play baseball instead of jousting, though the knights still insist on playing in full armor. But of course, the beloved adventures of Tom Sawyer are what Mark Twain is probably known the best for, and that is what a huge portion of this museum is dedicated to, taking you through the story of boyhood innocence, adventure, and just the thrill of growing up and all the greatness that comes with it. With Tom, Huckleberry Finn, Becky Thatcher, it's an amazing story, 
with a great cast of characters that really sucks you in and shows you what it's like to have been alive in Tom's day. Painting the whitewashed fence is probably one of the most iconic moments in literature. So of course, they had a great display here showing the fence and how it just desperately needed to be painted. What I really liked is that you could hit a little button and see the different things that the boys gave Tom so that they would have the honor of painting the fence for him. He really cleaned up that day. <laughs> Though I'm not quite sure I would have wanted this last one. A rat on a string. I have no idea what you would even do with that. As a lot of young boys, Tom and Huck were always pulling pranks on their teachers and parents. Here they're snatching the wig off the teacher's head. And there was even a little bit of intrigue with different scenes set in the graveyard and robbers who were up to no good. The final scenes of the book, of course, play out in the caves as Tom and Becky manage to get lost but end up discovering treasure and besting the bad guy. There was also some bats, which was a nice touch. And of course, after Tom Sawyer, we now enter the pages of the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Celebrated as possibly Mark Twain's greatest literary achievement, Huckleberry Finn will always be a classic. As opposed to walking through the pages of this one, you're invited to board a raft just like the one that Huck himself boarded, and you get to go on a little mini adventure as the raft moves up and down, the lights change, and videos play to show you different aspects of the adventure that he and Jim went on down the mighty Mississippi. Not to be left out, they made sure to mention several other works by Mark Twain, such as these that detailed his adventures out in the west with his brother. They rode wagons out there through the mountains. All the different adventures that befell them gave him plenty of material to write new stories from. Mark Twain was always a very large fan of animals, so he made sure to put them in his stories as much as he could. He often gave them human characteristics to help make satirical points, which personally, I think worked out pretty well for him. You could tell that Mark Twain had a love of the West and the wild adventures that could be had out there in this newer unclaimed land. The gold rush, the excitement, it really sparked some imagination in him, and we got some fantastic stories from it. Another great setting for adventures from Mark Twain was, of course, the ocean. Mark loved the sea. He loved the waters and traveling around, the different stories that could come from different places. And this did a great job of showing that. Of course, Mark Twain had a lot of experience on the water. As we moved up to the second story of the museum, you got to see a little of his days before being a writer when he was a steamboat pilot. These were old pictures of steamboats that were very popular in his day as they trucked up and down the river, bringing goods to people near and far. It's certainly a shame that steamboats have fallen out of fashion. Though we have much faster and sleeker boats now, none of them quite match the fashionableness and just the unique character that a steamboat had. For example, the horn. <laughs> Moving on from steamboats, we got to see artifacts from Mark Twain's actual life. This was a graduation robe that he wore, and right next to that, his signature white suit. And of course, behind that, a picture of him wearing said suit. A very iconic look. There weren't a ton of pictures in Mark Twain's day, 
but there was enough of them that we got a good glimpse into what he was like. Here were more items of his personal life, including an actual cast of his hand, along with his pipe and pocket watch there, a picture of his wife. This was a jewelry box that he had specially commissioned for her. There was a painting on the other side that they didn't like to keep up because it might degrade the painting. This was one of his top hats here. It was fascinating getting to see these things from such a legendary person. And my personal favorite artifact they had was Mark Twain's fountain pen. Just like the desk, it was incredible to think of the words that would have been written by this very pen. Nobody can argue that Mark Twain and his stories have left a legendary and lasting mark on the world. But let's head out into the town and see some of the inspiration for these famous tales. A lot of buildings have been left just like they were back in those days, including Mark Twain's father's place of work where he practiced law. And now we're headed in to check out the house of Tom Sawyer's lady love, Becky Thatcher. It turns out that Mark Twain took the inspiration for most of his characters from people that he actually knew here in this town as he grew up. This was one such example. Laura Hawkins was one of Samuel Clemens' early girlfriends when he was a little boy. When it came time to write his story, he used her as the inspiration of Becky Thatcher and actually wrote the scenes of her house exactly like Laura's house. So in a way, this house is two houses, Laura's house and Becky Thatcher's house. She was honored to be Becky Thatcher, and up until she died, was always proud of her link to this famous story. Of course, Tom and Becky were one of the first romantic couples that everybody knows about. This is a little of what they would wear, and there's actually a competition in this town at a festival every year where they crown anew Tom and Becky. And just a little bit outside of town, we decided to stop by and pay respects to Becky Thatcher herself, Miss Laura H. Fraser. Back in town, we headed down the path to find the home of another very famous character. And here we have the home of Tom Sawyer's best friend, Huckleberry Finn. A much more humble and small home, Huckleberry Finn was based on a boy that was a bit of an outcast in Mark Twain's day, but who he became fast friends with, even though his parents claimed that hanging out with that boy would do nothing but lead to trouble. I'm sure they had lots of adventures together. And now finally we come to the home of Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain himself. Let's check out inside. Now of course we've seen the inspiration for Becky Thatcher, for Huckleberry Finn, but who was Tom Sawyer? Well, it was Mark Twain himself. He fancied himself as the inspiration of Tom Sawyer. So in a way, this was also the home of Tom himself. Perfectly preserved, this little home is where Samuel Clemens grew up and spent his days. It was a two-story building, but still very, very small compared to more modern-day housing. They did a great job of allowing you to see every room, but still having glass up to help preserve the artifacts and just the natural beauty of the room itself. There was also little tidbits that would tell you whose room was whose, what commonly happened in each room, and just the way that it would have been utilized back in Mark Twain's day living there. Getting to see the roots of such a legendary figure really hit home and made him feel like more of a real living person. Some advice that's given to a lot of starting out authors is to write what you know. And I think Samuel Clemens really took that to heart. You can tell that he transferred everything about this little town, his friends, his family, growing up here, 
and turned it into a story that has truly lasted throughout the ages. Well, I'm not sure how, but uh, some kid has me painting a fence for him now. So, I guess that's the end of uh, this voyage. Thanks for tagging along. My name is David. This is Abnormal Voyages. See you in the next one.